will not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh shall come. And unto him shall the gathering of the nations be. The only star will arise out of Jacob. And he will smite the borders of Moab. And subdue the ends of Edom. God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. And I will divide Shechem. I will meet out the valley of Sukkot. I will cast my shoe over Edom. Ephraim is my head. Judah is my lawgiver. Manasseh is mine. I will triumph over Philistine. Thank you, Father. Let my prayer come before you as incense. And the lifting up of my hands as the evening oblation. Let your power awake within me. Let your fire kindle and stand me on my feet. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. All right, let's have our seats. Sometimes we want to follow. These things out of documented information. And dogma. But they are actually things that respond to spirit and life. And you can know about it and not know it. You can know all about it and not know it. You can be familiar with God's environment and not know God. You can be in church and not know. The Bible says familiarity breeds content. But the knowledge of God will produce living faith. So which one are you going to experience? Which one are you going to have? A knowledge about or a knowledge of the people who knew, who sat in the seat of Moses, kept the scriptures. And they knew all about Messiah, but they didn't know him. When he shows up, when he appears and he's manifesting, they are the first to attack him. So these things don't... A lot of people knew about the coming. They knew about the first coming. And a lot of people know about the second coming. But you can know about and not know of. Know him. And not recognize. A lot of people attempt to study eschatology without the knowledge of the end time. Study of the end time without the person who gave the scripture. And so they know all about, but the person who gave it is the person who knows it. And we will study prophetic scripture, but they don't have the spirit of prophecy. And those two operations will produce two different results. And we will have the expectation that, you know, there will be all this prediction, rapture is next week, rapture is end of this year, rapture is next year. And we'll be having those predictions for generations. And that's because people know about it. But they don't know it. It takes knowing the person who wrote it, having his breath on it, on you, studying it to begin to produce it. We are not supposed to meet the end times passive. 
We are not, we are not waiting for events to happen to us or happen around us. We are what is happening in the realm of the spirit. We are the ones that are making things. Before September 23rd became popular all over the world like this. Now when it was nothing, the Spirit of God was already speaking about it. And he was speaking about it to some of us and sending us places. Make sure September 23rd you are here. And when that man of God finished, he was speaking that morning. Sunday morning was 24th. He said, this is two years, September 23rd, that this prophet came here and declared a school of tyrannos that we run for two years. And a school of tyrannos in the book of Acts ran in Ephesus for two years before he broke through into the regions. And the Bible says so much that in the space of two years, they were taking handkerchiefs and aprons from Paul the Apostle to people who were sick and oppressed. And he was reasoning with and arguing and teaching daily in a school of Tyrannos. Before then, he had activated 12 disciples who only knew the baptism of John. So when he got there to Ephesus, that's Acts chapter 19. He began to tell them, do you know, have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And they were saying, we don't know whether there be a Holy Spirit. Well, what are you baptized? We are baptized with the baptism of John. So he took them from the baptism of John to the baptism in Christ and laid hands on them. And they got filled with the Holy Spirit and were prophesying. And he took them as a base. So, you know, the September 23rd has to do with something about a two-year two period and a school of tyrannos that God set in place to produce certain kinds of things that will affect the region. When he began to argue in the synagogues, the, Jew put, the Jews put Paul and his people out, so he moved to the school of tyrannos and was teaching there, and that's when the outbreak happened. And the whole of the region became affected. So that the Bible says in two years, not 20, in two years, the whole of the region of Asia, everyone came to hear the gospel. And people began to burn their occult books. At the beginning of the seminars yesterday, we were saying that in the beginning, when the earth was in darkness and without form and void, darkness was upon the field. And the Spirit of God moved over the surface of the earth. And we, you know, we feel that the movements of the Spirit of God is just what we experience in, in meetings. But the movements of the Spirit of God are, are always connected with creation. And the seasons of creation. And so it is now. This is the aspect of September 23rd and the sign of the Son of Man most people have not considered. We are waiting for what is going to happen to us in the earth, whereas in the realm of the spirit, we are what is happening. It is actually the, the sign in the sky it says, it is a man child that will rule the nations with a rod of iron that is going to be born. That is the... Um, um, primary triggering activity event that will trigger different kinds of things that will happen after that. So we are not reacting. We are not reactionary to what is coming. We are actually, if we stay with the Holy Spirit, we are actually the ones creating the effects that is making the dragon and his allies to begin to react. Otherwise, I know that they won't be giving us that date before now. The strangest thing is that end of last year when we, we, we uh, connected with, met that man briefly and then disconnected again. <laughs> we were supposed to meet, but it didn't happen. But this is the first time we are going to be in a meeting together after, soon after, immediately after September 23rd. And I look at it and I realize it's a full circle. Something that began years ago, has, it reached a seven-year period and then it's now turning full circle. Now that it's turning full circle, we are now coming together. But you see, signs are going on in the skies, and everybody is reading it. But you see, you and I don't follow signs. We are led of the Holy Ghost, and then signs and wonders follow us. That's what Jesus said. said these signs will what? Not just follow the pastor or the preachers, but follow them that believe. Do you understand? There are many times if you follow the Holy Spirit, you, don't need, you may not even know anything about the Hebrew calendar or know anything about the lights in the skies. Many times on assignments with the Holy Spirit, you will discover that there are cosmic events going on that nobody even knew anything about. 
But you just finish the assignment and then something pulls your attention online and discover that the very date that the Holy Spirit gave you for particular kinds of assignments, there were actually cosmic events. That's how we need to be living. That's how we are called to live. You may not, it's so, many, many times, it happens many, many times. Before I started discovering that the, there was a Hebrew calendar and a Hebrew timetable and then cosmic signs co coincide with them, we were already living in things and operating in things in the Holy Spirit, but we didn't have a, the, there was no theology of it, but there was a reality of it. So we didn't know about, but we knew what it was. And oftentimes it's hard to explain to people you know, until these kind of signs now appear. So you now have an opportunity to explain to people when there's this kind of noise. But these things have been going on before 2017. So whatever is going on up here in the skies, it's been building for years. And you've been, if you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, you will find yourself being regulated with it without even planning it. So you are not going to, it's not now that you will look at September 23rd and say rapture is coming. And then you are, you are making a mad rush to arrange yourself. Whatever is happening in the sky has been building before now. And operating the Holy Spirit, you've been seeing orchestrations. Most people don't understand that the schools of the Spirit, because that's what school of Tyrannus was. God's call to begin hosting schools of the Spirit and apostolic centers and Davidic houses were part of the preparation. Yeah, because, you know, uh, um, um, David is the son of God. I will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth. And the signs in the sky says a prince of God, a man child that will rule the nations. Do you understand? It's going to be. It is David that said, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Now ask of me and I will give you the hidden, thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thine possession. And then you will break them. With a rod of iron. And you will dash them in pieces like a clay pot. So that sign you read in the skies has already been in Psalm 2. It's a Davidic sign. It's a sign of the Son of Man. That operated in David even before now. So the idea of, a rule, of ruling the nations with a rod of iron is not new. It's been consistent throughout scripture, but it's been consistent in, in the in Messianic scriptures connected to Davidic lineage as part of the expression of the signs of the Son of Man. Amen and amen. Bible says in the last days, in the last days, I will raise up again the tabernacle of David, which was falling down, and I will restore the breaches. There. People don't connect the fact that Davidic house is rising is the manifestation of the sign. You remember, we are not, the sign is a signboard. Nobody gets to a signboard and say, I've arrived at the venue. You, you see the signboard and then you look at the gate by the side or behind it and say, okay, that's the place, the signboard. Do you understand? It's, so the people who know about will stop at the signboard and they will have no ability to progress further. But the people who are walking in may not have as much detail. Do you understand? But they will enter into and be the fulfillment of the sign. Amen and amen. So the, 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 the rising, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, thou art my son. Psalm 2. This day have I what? What's happening in September 23rd? A march, that's the sign anyway. A man-child is being what? That will do what? Rule the nations with a what? That's Psalm 2 now, isn't it? But you see, what David says is that the day of my announcement of sonship has been declared out of heaven. So as that decree has come from the court of heaven, I will now take that decree and I will declare the decree and say, the Lord has said unto me, that son that I want to is you. This day have I begotten. The announcement of sonship is what is going on. The announcement of the rising of sons is what is coming up. The announcement of the Davidic order is what is coming up. And that Rosh Hashanah this September, what's happening? That's the Hebrew year 5778. That's the Davidic number now. That's David's house. It's the number 8. When a cycle of 7 finishes and then the 8 begins. 
He's not in the former order. He does not fit, but he comes in and a new order is birthed. And he is, he is a ruling king in that realm. Even though he didn't fit into the original order. And that's the year beginning. There has never been a year like 5777 this year, this Hebrew year. And the next, you see, 5777 is, is just so, so historic. And we can see so many things that happened in this year alone. And, but as this year ends, another order begins. Another order that takes its roots from this order and begins into a whole new sphere of dealing. And so that's the Davidic people rising. That's the restoration of the tabernacle of David. That's the sons of David rising. The Bible says in those days that the least among them will be as David. And the house of David will be as what? As God. And as the angel of the Lord before them. So something is happening about the last days and the Davidic order being restored. And that sign exactly quotes Psalm 2. The sign at the Rosh Hashanah quotes Psalm 2. That says, a son, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, thou art my son, a man child. This day have I begotten thee. Now ask of me and I will give you the hidden for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy position. And thou will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them in pieces like a potter's. You, you, you see, the rod of iron is a, is, is, is a sign of the son of man in the Davidic realm, in the Davidic priesthood. And so, the emphasis that has been going on about, you know, the house of David or the strongholds of David or the army of David and the 30 and the 3. You see the connection. The 30 and the 3 of David's mighty men. You know, David had an army that was more than 30. 33, more than 3. But they kept categorizing them in threes and in thirties and in threes and in thirties. And then you see this sign with all the 33 surrounding it. it. It points to the Son of God, but in the Davidic order. And this is a direct, this scripture is a direct expression of the kind of things that people are reading. But you see, people are going to wait for that day before they start deciding ahead. So what should we do? But the people who are walking the street are already moving in what should be done. Because they are not following signs. Rather, signs and wonders are what? And remember, whatever lights appear in the sky, it's not for the skies. It always plays out with human beings in the earth. It's always, it always plays out with God's chosen vessels, God's listening vessels who are following his direction. And part of what you will see are the signs of the Son of Man playing out in the lives of people. The sign of <laughs> brethren talk, turning against Joseph. And say, it's a sign of the Son of Man. The sign of Jonas ending up three days in the belly of the whale before being put forth to represent God in unusual places. Those signs of the Son of Man will play out. The sign of the Son of Man where prophetic things are playing out and people are turning against you and thinking they are serving God, but they are actually fulfilling prophets. Those signs of the Son of Man will all be playing out in individual lives to produce the Son of God in you. Because what the sign says is that a man-child will be what? That will do what? Rule the nations with a rod of iron. Psalm 110 says something similar. David said, I saw the Lord say to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make all your enemies your word. You know, that's the other part of the sign. That the man child will be caught up to God's throne in heaven, Revelation 12. And then he'll be there to rule with him. Well, Psalm 110 captures that picture. And that's a Davidic psalm too. He says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make all your enemies thy what? Do you see that? Then he says, the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine. Do you see that? Hostility and then the rulership of God. And then he mentions the rod. Again. The man child that will be caught up with God that will rule the nations with a rod of iron. Do you see what I'm saying? They are, they are already there. And that's why, you know, you, you point to prophetic scripture to interpret these things in Revelations. They are already there. And everybody, anybody who has been listening to the, Holy, to the Holy Spirit has been hearing about the Melchizedek priesthood. Been hearing about the Davidic houses. Been hearing about the Davidic realms. The, uh, the centers God is raising and equipping. Well, that's your sign up there in the sky. It is you that they are announcing you will come full circle in September. 
So the same way they put a sign in the skies for Jesus to be born, on what is supposed to be, what many people mistake as Christmas, the same way they put a sign for you in the sky and say, that's your announcement. And you are going to be announced to the nations. And people in the far east are already seeing your sign. And thrones are going to be upturned, and new thrones in the heavenlies are going to come forth. Do you see what I am saying? All the people who have, for a while, there's been this talk about the Melchizedek priesthood. They've been talking about the Davidic houses. They've been talking about the Davidic tribe. You know the Hebrew word for rod here? Because we are still talking about the man child with the rod. The Hebrew word for rod is mate. And it means a rod, a staff, or a tribe. That's why Isaiah chapter 11 says, out of the shoot of Jesse, there will come a rod or a stem. Do you understand? He didn't say from the shoot of David. He didn't trace David directly. He traced the lineage. When you said, you know what they call a family tree. So what they did was that they didn't talk to David directly. They talked to David's family tree. From the lineage of Judah. And says from that stem there will come another branch. In the book of Isaiah. And that branch, he will be what? He will be a rod. He will be a scepter. He will be a ruler. And they connected the ruler to a tribe. The spirit of the Lord will be upon him, the spirit of, of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and understanding, the spirit that gives him speed in understanding the knowledge of the fear of the, of the Lord. And he names the seventh spirit that will walk upon this man. And the Bible says he will rule with equity. He will judge with justice. Let's see that. Um, Isaiah 11. And there shall come forth a rod. Do you see that? Out of the stem of what? Who, which other rod came from the stem of Jesse? It was David. And then this one is speaking about Jesus, both in his first and his second coming. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. So what's somebody's roots? That's the lineage he comes from. So they are, they are connecting a rod to a root. They are connecting a ruler with a tribe. Do you understand what I am saying? And the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him and the Spirit of Wisdom and understanding, spirit of counsel and mind, spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And make him quick in understanding in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of the ears. But he will judge with righteousness, with Zedek. He will judge. Go on. And reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall smite the earth with the rod of his what? Mouth. And with the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of... Suddenly, a king who is a just ruler. You know, when you are talking about September 23rd, and you are not talking about the seven spirits beginning to walk in believers, you've not said anything. What you just stopped, you just stopped at the signboard. But when he mentions the rod in the scripture, he mentions the Melchizedek priesthood. And he mentions the tribe, the Davidic tribe that will emerge. And he mentions that this appearance of the rod of God will activate the seven spirit that will make true truth and justice to begin to emerge. Such that it will not be, you know, passing sentences and saying things out of the hearing of rumors. Or out of the sight of the eyes of what you just see. But they will perceive the spirit of God to bring rightly dividing. Into, into the situations. And that points to a situation of injustice that has prevailed before then. It points to a situation of falsehood that has prevailed in that environment. A situation of lies. But yet those two are the signs of the Son of Man playing out in people's lives. Because people will experience false accusations. They will experience lies. And they will experience the tongue of the dragon. What, 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 how do I make it? The Bible says in Revelation 12 that the sign is supposed to be pointing to. He says that after the man child has been caught up to heaven. And then the woman that gives birth escapes. Michael and the angels will fight against the dragon and cast him down. And then the proclamation is made that salvation has come. Because the dragon, the devil, Satan, the accuser. That sees not to accuse day and night. Before the father accused the brethren, there's going to be something in the realm of the courts of heaven that is going to shift in this season. Because the seven spirits of God will be loose 
And the operation of the dragon as the accuser is going to break down a lot. And that's why you are seeing a lot of that around now. You are seeing, Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver and then they got false witnesses to speak against him, to say he spoke against the temple and he spoke against the law. Do you understand? That too was a sign of the Son of Man. And a lot of people are experiencing that and don't understand that that's the process of betting sonship in them. But a lot of people want to explain the signs in the skies and not explain the signs of the Son of Man that is playing out right now. Joseph experienced the same thing. He was sold for, to slavery by his own brethren for 30 pieces of silver. And then when he got to Potiphar's house, he was lied against and went to prison. So what, can you see why the seven spirits of God will be needed in the day of the Son of Man rising up with a rod of iron? Because the, this dragon is not just a monster, he's also the accuser. He's an accuser because he knows the courts of heaven. And he has been going on operating the courts of heaven without being stopped because people don't know about the council of hell and the courts of heaven. But in this time, certain things, somebody who will, he will, he will argue in the court of heaven with equity for the meek of the earth is being raised in the form of the sons of man, of the son of man. Do you see what is going on? And eventually at the end of that word, the, Satan, Satan means accuser. And then they went further and said, he ceased not to accuse. He was having a head there in the courts of heaven. So injustice has been prevailing. And falsehood has been prevailing. But the rod of the son of man, the rod of the, of the stem of the branch of Jesse, will contain the seven spirits of God that we allow truth and justice to comfort. And yet, many people have to be sold into slavery. They have to be, because the person who saw the twelve stars the son and it was joseph but when he saw after that that's when he got sold into slavery he got betrayed for 30 pieces of silver by his own brethren and god lied against him potiphar's house most people will see the 12 stars in the sky but not understand that it's connected with the people who are selling them behind and god using that as an accelerated process to push them into sonship and to push them into rulership and to push them to be betrayed the second time for doing the right thing. Because he refused Potiphar's wife, but the woman had his jacket. So she had evidence, but it was false. That's why you need Isaiah 11.1 1, with somebody who will come and not judge according to the sight of the eyes. And according to the hearing of the ears. But he will judge with a what? Righteous judgment. If you look around, that situation is prevailing. There is evidence. Whose shirt is this? Is your shirt? Did you do it? No. But is this your shirt? They just will exhibit one. What was the ju verdict from the jury? According to the sight of our eyes and the hearing of the ears of this woman who is crying, he is therefore what? Guilty. But he's the one who saw the 12 stars and the sun and the moon. But when they put him in prison, he meets the butler and the baker. And from prison, he arrives to be the ruler over Egypt. And they give him the signet of Pharaoh and authority to bind his princes and teach his nobles wisdom. That was the 12 signs in disguise. That was the stars that he saw. Do you understand? But the way that stars that he saw bowing down to him played out was his brethren selling him in the sign of the Son of Man. A crazy woman betraying him in the sign of the son of man, but by age 30, in the sign of the son of man, he was given the scepter of Egypt. Let me hear you say amen. amen. So if you are seeing the 12 stars and the sun and the moon, you can't relate it with the sonship process going on on ground. You've not achieved anything, but those things are going on. And the spirit of Zedek, the spirit of discernment is already teaching those things and showing you, look, David, if you want to activate David, activate the issue of justice. David insists that there must be justice. What God told David was a king must be just. Ruling. He said, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me. The Lord taught me to be king. The Lord spoke to me and said, a king must be just. Ruling in the fear of God. And then he will be like the light that rises. That's the morning star. 
He will be like sunrise in the morning and rain upon the dew. Do you understand? So when you are talking about the tabernacle of David, you are talking about the lineage of David. You are talking about the seven spirits that will bring forth justice unto truth. The Bible says he will not cry or lift up his voice or cause his voice to be heard in the street, but he will bring justice unto truth. And the islands are far off with what? They will wait for his law. So he will not judge according to the sight. Otherwise, he will send Joseph to prison and have him killed. Because the evidence seems to be stacked up against him until he arranges and says, wait first. Who really began this thing? And then the Spirit of God starts to pop up the situation. And yet, that is the rod of God. That is the, there is no point of a rod of rulership if there, except there is a deck in it. Except there is justice in it. Do you see what I am saying? That's what, Melchizedek is called king of, actually king of justice. Do you understand? And then the priesthood of Melchizedek is that which comes in that order, not according to the order of Levi. Do you understand? And then there's been this emphasis on the priesthood of Melchizedek, this emphasis of the Davidic rod, this emphasis on Psalm 110, this emphasis of the tribe, of the Davidic tribe, of the martyr, a rod that is a staff, that is also a tribe. That's why it's a tribe. That's why it says, out of Zion, the Lord will fashion the rod of thy strength. So you know Zion is the people of God. Zion is the heel of God, is the nation of God, is the church and Israel put together. And out of that, there will be a formation of a group of people who will be the rod of his strength. Or, or where you imagine the man child that will catch up to heaven will be carrying stick. Is that what you thought? Because if, if that's what you are thinking, you've read it wrongly. He says out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Do you understand? And then he now says here in Samaria and 10 that he will fashion a matter, a rod, a people, a force out of Zion. And then he will be with that force, him that is already seated in heaven, he will fashion a rod from him out of Zion in the earth and say, now rule thou in the midst of thine. So we understand that the woman is going to be persecuted. So there's going to be a hostile environment. People are going to be surrounded by enemies. Those are Davidic realities that are manifestations of the signs of the sons of man. But right in the middle of that, you will experience what? The rulership of God. Amen? And that exactly is the drama playing out in the heavenlies. As recorded in Psalm 2. The, the issue now will be, is the scepter resting on your life? Is it just? Or is it unjust? Amen? Because <laughs> if you want to interpret September 22 signs in disguise, it's in the scripture. It's in Psalm 2. It's in Psalm 110. It's in Isaiah 11. It's in Genesis what? Where Joseph saw the same um, 11 stars, the sun and the moon. But what, what happened? Genesis 37, thank you. So what happened in that period? How did that sign in the sky manifest? In Matthew and Luke, the light will appear in the sky, but the human being will be born on the earth. Do you understand? So whatever is going on in the heavens has a drama playing on around you right now. The end of that drama is that a rod of justice is supposed to be produced. You are supposed to image a ruler with a rod of justice, even though you have suffered injustice. Because, <laughs> yeah, what people don't realize is that the, 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 the man-child company are these people I just listed. The Davids, the, 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 the Josephs, the Daniels. Do you understand? The Babs. <laughs> <The Babs. laughs> Amen. Amen. So do you understand? It's already been played out with those people. Whatever Joseph dreamt that he saw was what played out in his own life. What the wise men saw in the sky was happening in a manger. Somewhere in Bethlehem. And what is going on in Revelations is also been happening and it's happening all around us right now. And that's why they mention a dragon that is both the devil and the Satan, the accuser that sees not to accuse. So we are, when you talk about this sign, you are talking about a, a hostile environment that involves people who say they know what is right, but are doing and attacking people operating in injustice, and operating as the voice of the accuser. Therefore, when God raises the rod, it will be with the seven spirits so that there can be equity and justice. 
Amen. Amen. So when we when we, 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 we when you talk about the serpent, the dragon, you are also talking, when he says he's an accuser, you are talking about situations in the courts of heaven that will now be addressed. That will go into hyperdrive. Where the dragon will be kicked out. Part of the warfare, you know, of Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon also throw him out of heaven. And when they throw him out, there was great rejoicing in the earth. They said, now salvation has come and the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Do you see what I'm saying? Because the false accuser has been cast out. Let's read that in Revelations. It's the sign of the Son of Man. It happened with Jonah too. Happened with Isaac. Happened with, with Jacob, the prince of God, Israel, in Laban's house, with his wages being changed ten times. Okay, so, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon and under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, traveling in birth and pain to be delivered. So there is traveling going on. And we connected it with Israel. Now we are connecting it with us. Everybody is supposed to be traveling now to produce the son of God. In them, to produce the justice of God. In them, to produce the kingdom of God, the rulership. In them, that's what that sign means. It's a traveling that is going on. A travel in Egypt, they suffered and suffered. Then at Passover, God reversed it and took away their firstborn son and then released his own firstborn son, which is the nation of Israel, out of Egypt, but sacrificed his own firstborn son in the form of the lamb in lieu. Ahead. Okay, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Next. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. What does, what, how does the dragon devour? Is he going to eat the child? What does a dragon do? He brings assault. He's the devil. He's also the accuser. The enemy has been trying to abort so many things. To kill it as soon as it is birth. Before it has any chance to gain any exp expression. The enemy has been working so severely to kill Davidic things. Do you realize David running from Saul was the dragon? You might think it was Goliath, but it took David like 10 minutes, 30 minutes to take care of Goliath. But the next 15 years is running from Saul. So which one was, do you understand? Which one was more, more difficult? Which one was the real dragon? You see, the issue in there was the injustice. The injustice that for doing right, for saving Israel, it was the greatest and the worst day of his life at the same time. Because some people will look at everything you do as a power game. They have their way of interpreting everything. You do, their mind is locked into it. So no matter what you do, they are moving to counter you. And they won't do it to your face, they will do it behind you. So they will have some form of influence, but it's with injustice. They can't stand doing heart to heart. Let's do what is right. So you see that kind of situation prevailing. Where things that should be better are killed, suddenly people are going against their amassing, joining hands, and you are looking at the dragon. And he's the accuser. Somebody who is far away doesn't stand to accuse. He has to be in the vicinity. And if you think it's a joke, when you try to brush it aside, you, are, you now see the vehemence. In the later scripture, you see how the dragon released a flood. You see the vehemence, some people come, they come against, and they, they have this, this ill will against you. They can't stop thinking about you night and day. 
But it's not coming from them. It's actually a dragon. Overhead, that's why the ill will doesn't have explanation. So when he releases the flood, is it water he's talking about? What happened when Jesus, when the baby was born, the first one that the star appeared over Bethlehem? When he was born, there was crisis all around. They were calling his name in different places and looking for how to take him out. It's not just water flood. But that there is water flood is a sign. It's an indication that there is war being made against what God is trying to birth. So these things have been playing out. Now the sign appears and most times we can't make the connection, but it is you they are talking about. Because Jesus is not going to be born a second time. But the, the lineage where he was born from is still there. And another generation who will wield the scepter with the seven spirits are coming out of it. If you are here, say amen. amen. But the process that they are using to come out of it is by the process of the sign. The various signs of the son of man. Like the three days in the whale's belly. Like being sold for 30 pieces of silver by your brethren. Do you understand? By being lied against in, in Potiphar's house. Like, like what, what else? Like being chased about by Saul. When God put his anointing, his grace upon your life. By having people amassing against you. For no reason you can perceive much at all. Those are all the various signs of the sons of man. Are playing out right now. And it's all pointing to the same sign. All the, the sign in the heavens is pointing to them. And that's why when they emerge, they are supposed to know the spirit of truth and justice. They are not supposed to be oppressors. They are not supposed to be people who will manipulate and use their influence wrongly. They are supposed to bring forth truth and justice. And that's what the seven spirit will produce. It will produce the equity of God. It will, he says it, it will argue, it will reprove with equity. That means it will contend. That's like a lawyer, an advocate that now knows the court of heaven. Because that's where the dragon has been. In the court of heaven. So now we get a series of revelations coming to the world of Christ about the courts of heaven. And the council of hell. And the assembly of the morning stars. And receiving justice in the court of heaven. Receiving verdicts against the accuser in the court of heaven. And people wonder what, what is going on. You don't understand that it's connected to the dragon. And the dragon is connected to the sign that you are reading in the sky. And that's the difference between knowing about and knowing. Because knowing about will let you have... All the starry positions in the heavens without having the stream of it that is playing out. How the sign is playing out in heaven, but not how the son of man is being born in you. That will produce relationship. Because the end of all of these processes, like for Isaac, like for Jacob, like for Joseph, like for Moses, like for David. The end of it is that a king must be just. Kings are born. Who will be like the morning star, ruling in the fear of the Lord. And then they will say they will be like sunrise. That's the end. And that means some people are, this, a man-child company, they are going to be people who they will be fashioned out of Zion. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord will fashion the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule thou. So as he has raised him up to heaven to sit at his right hand, he will fashion another set of people according to his type out of Zion and they will become a rod or a tribe with which he will rule in the midst of what? So you see, the hostile situation still remains. The dragon still chases people. He's still releasing a flood, but in the midst of the flood, you will be ruling. And your authority will be ascending and increasing all the time because the Son of God is gradually coming out of you. That's what's supposed to happen from September 23rd. The son of God is being born in people. The ruling rod is coming out of Zion. The tribe, the man-child company, the man-child group, the Davidic 30 and 3, the mighty men of David, do you understand? They are coming. The sons of God, according to the order of David, their sonship will be declared. I will declare the decree, the Lord has said unto me, thou art my... That's what's been declared. On that day, they are declaring the sons of God. So you are supposed to take it up and say, they've declared the decree from the court of heaven. 
So me, I'm taking the verdict from the court of him. Now I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, thou art my son. This day I just gave birth to you. Now begin to enter another prayer dimension. Begin to ask of me for the hidden. Begin to ask of me for the nations. Begin to ask of me for extraordinary things. Begin to ask for unusual things. Right in the middle of the attack. Right in the middle of the assault and accusation. Begin to take more. Do you? And that's what was happening. David was being chased by Saul and he was beating the Philistines. And he will run for his life and go and take more. And then run again and go and wipe out the Amalekites. But he will still be running for it because the dragon was still after him. But his rod was increasing. The dragon was still all over his life, bent on killing him. But he was still taking more ground. Do you understand? Because that is the sign of the Son of Man. It is the way the Son of Man, the Son of God is born in you. It is by all of these processes. That is the way in which Joseph became prince in Egypt. It is by going for that. They put him in a pit. Then they put him in a dungeon. And they kept putting him in pit. More and more problem. If you look from the outward, you say, this guy is like his cost. But it was the son of man, the sign of the son of man. Coming out of him. And when the announcement came from the verdict of the court of heaven, you know, when God wants to vindicate you, he won't go to the same people that are, he will go higher. And go and fetch a, the highest decree and say, that guy, bring him up. And I just imagine when they brought him out of the pit, I wonder what will be happening in Potiphar's house. I don't know what will happen with Potiphar's wife because they buried him, never expecting him to come out again. You go to prison that time, is for life. In fact, he was a slave in the first place. Then you go to prison. That's like double prison. He's gone forever, except he wasn't. And they brought him, that's resurrection. It's a sign of the Son of Man. And they brought him out to come and rule. That's the word that they said about Jesus, that he made, in his death, he was with the unrighteous. That's with the thieves. And he made his grave with the, with the rich. And then from, from, from there, he is raised up to rule. And it's constantly playing out all along. But we need the discerning people who have the seven spirit to point the Zedek to us. To constantly point the justice that this is the route of the Son of Man. This is the root way in which the Son of Man passed. So to enter into his rod, to be fashioned out of Zion, to be his ruling rod, you also pass through the same route. Can you imagine Jesus hanging on the cross? And they, every Passover, they sing Psalm 110 in Hebrew. And as they are singing, he's hanging on the cross, and he's hearing them sing the stone that the builders rejected. Do you know that Psalm 110? Has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is what? <laughs> Say the sign of the Son of Man. He is the one hanging, but they are calling his name. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my Yeshua, my salvation. So they are talking about him, and they've rejected him. All the prophecies they are giving is about him, but they've rejected him. And then he turns around and becomes the foundation for a new order. That's the number eight. That's the Davidic. Do you understand? So that's how they cast out Joseph too. They rejected him, but they all <laughs> went back to Egypt to buy bread and food and corn some years down. The stone that they rejected, he saw face looking like an Egyptian prince. And the death certificate they gave his father, they had to go back and explain that thing. Because that coat of many colors that was bloody, that they say an animal tore, they had to go back and retrieve that. He was back from the grave. So you are not following the sign. You are the sign. I and the children that the Lord has given unto me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel. From the Lord of hosts that dwelleth on Mount Zion. So what do you do? While you may be running for your life, continue taking. While the dragon is after you, continue because... He will
will soon, he's, he's soon coming out of the court. They will soon kick him out. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, not loving. They overcame the dragon, not loving their lives. Sometimes it seems like you don't, you don't care about your life, but it is because you are bringing down the dragon. So if you are seeing some of these things around you, it is the sign of the Son of Man. Not just as a star appearing in the sky, but as the process of producing the Son of Man. In you too. So that now when you surface, the court of heaven is corrected. The serpent, the dragon is cast out and then true verdicts of justice begin to come out. And that means the release of the seven spirits that now raises people who can speak to the issue. And speak to the heart and say to but until then injustice prevails. You just see yourself suffering injustice after injustice and be wondering why. It is because a dragon is in contention. But while that is going on, your scepter is increasing. If you are noticing these factors in your life, then you are the sign. You are noticing that the more the pressure, the more the scepter is growing. Something is going on. You are winning the victory in the courts of heaven. You are the very sign that God is talking about. You are part of the man-child company that he is raising. He will fashion the rod of his strength out of Zion. Thy throne, O God, is forever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a word. Can you see it again? Thou hast loved righteousness and has hated wickedness. Therefore, God thy God has anointed thee with the oil of what? above thy fellow. You can see that scepter, that rod again. And it's a, So do you love to bring out, let's bring out, let's just point to the truth from God's perspective, from the seven spirits. And I realize, like, look, let there be equity. Let there be, equal. not that now you, you, because he says you will be anointed above your fellow. It means they are fellows. Do you know the dragon was the ex-anointed? Is the ex-anointed. He was once the anointed cherub that covered it. So, he, you see, he knows something about being powerful under God. But if he can't measure it with Zedek and justice, God has to remove him. But in the process of removing, there won't be a vacuum. God has to re-anoint some other people who will go, because Saul was anointed. But now he was, it was the political gains, it's the influence, it's the politics, it's the money that he is after. But, you know, when God is raising David, Saul still has to finish his tenure. Forty years, he had to be in rulership. So all of that time, David was running his life. And the ex-anointed dragon and the ex-anointed Saul, they always form a good partnership. See, the ex... (laughs) The ex-anointed dragon and the ex-anointed Saul, it's perfect match. They always form a good... The enemy recognizes... Yes. And he knows how best. So all those feelings of like, I want my influence, I want to control my money is coming from somewhere. Those feelings that is making you, making them make you a target is actually coming from somewhere. When people gather and they make you the subject of the issue and nobody will even bring it up and tell, look, let's talk about it, let's straighten this out. What you are seeing are the feelings of the dragon expressed in human beings. So God has to anoint above so that you have to now love. Do you understand the righteousness? You must carry the seven spirits and begin to operate in it because that's what God is trying to remove. A king must be just. There must be, you must be just. Eventually, Zedek will show up. So God is raising you to be a priest of Zedek, a Melchizedek. Do you understand? Because eventually Zedek is going to kick in. The justice of God is going to, it may, tar, it may delay, but it's going to come. Do you understand? So that God doesn't have to wipe everything. He raises a tribe that can carry it and steward it. And that's you, especially if you've experienced the injustice. That injustice now transfers a weight on you, increases your scepter, so that you, when they bring you up, they tell you, you, you must be just. Though. That's why. He raises men from the dung hill. And set them among princes that they may inherit the throne of God, thrones of glory, because the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. He has set the world upon them. How long will you judge unjustly, Selah? Help the poor, save the widow, find out the cause. 
and make it straight. But people without that, they are doing that to maintain and sustain. So the environment of the birth of the man child is the operation, is the is is environment of the hostile operations of the dragon. And all of these things I just described are expressions of the dragon against the son of man. They are all signs of the son of man. Okay, let me read the next verse. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a what? So you can see the word rod, 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 rod has been coming from a long way from Genesis. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from... It's been coming, Psalm 110. It's been coming, Isaiah 11. It's been coming, do you understand? All the way. Now it's here. It's not new. It's, it's saying what it has always been saying. He will rule all nations with a rod of iron. Her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's 1,260 days. That's three and a half years. Go on. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. Watch this. The old serpent called the... And what? You can see they are listing all his names and activities. Which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a voice in heaven saying, go on. Now is come what? And strength. And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Why? For because the accuser of our brethren is what? Which what? Accuse them before our God. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, they love not their lives, even unto death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down to you in great wrath. Hang on. They, call, they said this guy is a dragon and yet is a Satan. That's the accuser. He talks about heightened operations in the courts of heaven. So that we are hearing about Davidic realm and then we are hearing about teachings, about messages about operating in the courts of heaven. They are all connected to this season. At the end of this season, from this September, we are supposed, God is expecting to produce skilled priests and operators in the courts of heaven. And that's, where, that's what David was doing in Psalm 2, where he proclaimed the rod and his sonship. He said, what does the Bible say from the beginning of Psalm 2? Why did the hidden what? Rage. And the people do what? Do you see? It's the same scenario over and over. The, the kings of the earth and their rulers, they do what? Against the Lord and against his... That's the scenario, the hostile scenario. That's the dragon. And then he begins to declare what God says. Let's break their bands as soon as cast away their cause. That's what they are saying. He that sits in heaven shall laugh, and the Lord shall have them in the reason. Then shall he speak to, unto them in his wrath. And then he will do what? He will say, and vex them in his displeasure. And then he says, yet have I set my word. Then seven says, I will declare thee. He is talking about the verdict. After they've raged and they've raged, they take counsel against the Lord. You know what? When you you know who a counsel is? It's an advocate, it's a prosecutor, it's a lawyer. You are talking about operations in the courts of heaven. And David talks about a priesthood and a prayer realm that he can obtain verdicts and decrees from, in spite of accusations. Because all of these things were accusations, attacks against David by people in his environment. But he traced it to the dragon assaulting the son of man. And so that's it. It's not really you, it's the son of man that they are after. So, and they are after you because they see the son of man in you. And the, the point is to wipe that out and stop it in its track. But you see, when the son of man comes, he obtains the verdict that declares his sonship and then declares his authority to begin to take. And then that's what begins to happen. You just see things breaking out. Now he talks about the dragon in Revelations 12, and he says he's an accuser, but that's what those noise young people were making around David. It's the same very scenario. That sign is also Psalm 2 praying out. And the end of it is the rod being produced. Let's go back to Revelations 12. 
So the dragon is cast out. That means there is major victory in the courts of heaven because the Davids, the Davidic order, the sons of God, the 30 and the 3, the Melchizedek order of priesthood have now matured in skill in operating in the courts of heaven. And so they can produce just verdicts. They can download the seven spirit and operate from the courts of heaven and bring forth righteousness unto truth. Are you here? You, you, you may not realize they've been training you in operating the courts of heaven. And that understanding has been coming in recent times. It's part of the scenario that is playing out. But look at something peculiar they say here. The late, later verses. Go down. Go down, down, the place where I stopped. Okay, so, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, look at what it says, isn't this peculiar? Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. When the accuser is cast out. So kingdom emerges, the seven spirit emerges. For the accuser of brethren is cast out, which accused them before our God day and night. That's the war that was overcome. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Wait a minute. Who is he asking to rejoice? The people in heaven. Do the people who have died and got to heaven need our advice about rejoicing? The spirits of just men made perfect. They are already perfected. They are already rejoicing. The people he is talking to here are people who have not died. Not the people who have died and gone, but the people who are on earth but operating in heavenly places. But he says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil is come down. So teaching us, God has been teaching us to operate in the Holy Spirit walking. Before the sign appeared on September 23rd, he's been giving you the, 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 the dates, calling times and seasons, teaching us to operate in times and seasons. It's so that we operate in the heavenlies and not on the earth. Because for those of us who operate in the heavenlies, great times of rejoicing will come. In spite of the shakings that are on the earth. Because we are not following the signs. The signs are following us. And eventually, we become the manifestation of the signs. That's why they said, Oath, they shall be for signs and for seasons. Genesis 1.14. And Isaiah 8.18 says, I and the children that the Lord has given we are for oath. In Hebrew, we are for signs. So that sign up there is you here. That's why the Bible says you have a more sure word of prophecy, which you do well to hold on to like a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the morning star arises. So whatever star light is out there is a process going on in you that will come with day dawn. And day star arising. Let's, let's finish it up. Is that the end? No. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a, he has a short time. So that's it. When the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought the man child, and to the woman were given wings of a great eagle that he might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and two times, and half a time. You see it again. It's the same three and a half years from the face of the serpent. And the serpent was cast. So, you know, you, you can see it's a series of timelines that they are connecting. Let's go to that verse in Matthew chapter 24 that talks about the sign of the Son of Man. So that's Matthew 24, right? Okay. No, that's not the verse. Uh -huh. Yeah. And he sat upon Mount Olives. That's verse 3, right? And the disciples came unto him privately, tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? Wait, 
that's not the exact verse. Huh? Okay, so Matthew 24, 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in, the, in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Isn't this strange about tribes versus tribes? And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud of heaven with power and great glory. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not just about what is happening out there. It's about the Son of God beginning to express his kingdom and begin to express himself. This, you know, some say it may be this, may be the rapture, maybe it may be, it may not be, but all of those things, rapture and revelation are about the Son of Man, the Son of God coming into full expression. It's interesting, you know, when we share these things about gates, somebody pointed out to me how that, they sent me a chat how that, you know, about this, the lights in the heavens and then gates opening in the earth, and then things beginning to happen in the form of the hurricanes. And you can see the, the eclipse happened on August 21st. And then when did the hurricane begin? 25th, 26th, the flooding in Texas, 25th, 26th. Well, Luke 21, the same rendition of Matthew 24. Luke 21, verse 25 says, There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. So that's 21. On 25th, the sea began to... <laughs> then on 26th, men's heart failing them for fear and looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. So it connected what was going on in the sea and we talk, when we talk about gates opening with something being shaken up in the heavenlies. Well, what is being shaken up is so that the son of God can be released in the earth. So maybe you are the one creating all the shaking in the sea. Maybe some kind of process going on on your inside that is revealing a new depth of the kingdom is producing shakings in the air. That is shaking an order and beginning the bed pangs of another order. Yes, it's very, very true. Because when Jesus resurrected, there was an earthquake. And different kinds of shakings were taking place. That is the Son of Man emerging. So when he's re-emerging and re-showing up, whether you are from the skies, it may not be any less. Amen and amen. The final sign of the Son of Man before we pray was Jacob, who became Israel himself. You see, we talked about gates opening. The place where Jacob met with God on his way to Laban when he was fleeing from his brother Esau, that place, he laid down his head and he saw these same kind of ruling angels ascending and descending on a staircase, on a ladder. And he said, he called the place Bethel meaning the house of God, saying this is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of Israel. On his way back years later, when he passed through, he met God around that place, Bethel and Peniel, where the angel wrestled with him as Esau was coming, and they changed his name from Jacob to what? Israel means God's prince, a prince of hell. Meaning it's not just hell's gates that are opening. It is actually the gates of heaven that are opening, and it's the sons of God, the princes of God, that will rule with the death, with the seven spirits that are coming through the gates of heaven. Do you see? And that's why Jesus, in speaking to Simon Peter, he said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail, and I will give you the keys of the... That place where Jesus was speaking, Philippa, is close to Syrian border. They know that there are gates of hell in that place, actually, historically. So when Jesus stood there and made that statement to Peter, he, it, it, it was actually in reference in the environment of demonic gates that they know around that place. The answer here, therefore, what God, what God has been pressing is that, as you see, it's a time for the gates of heaven to open. This is the season in which Holy Spirit gates and portals are opening. It is the season to open the gates of the princes of God. That is how to respond in this time. This is exactly what will put you ahead so that you are operating in the heavenlies. You are no longer available for the dragon to defeat. He will try. Do you understand? 
Because those things, those pressures will come up. They will show up. But you will be high, then you can rejoice. And every time he strikes and he will miss, you will have greater swaths of the authority of God released so that you can ask and receive. Ask and receive. Hallelujah. So it's the gates. He said, this is none other. I saw angels ascending and descending. He said, this is none other than the house of God. This is the gate that opens into heaven. From that place, the son of God, the prince of God in him, began to evolve until he got to Laban's house and came back 20 years later. When he came back, they came and he changed his name and the kingdom of God began to enter the earth. And when Jesus says, I give you the keys of the kingdom, the key is the key is the key. Isaiah 22 says, I will set upon his shoulder the key of the house of David. So there is no other key that Jesus gives other than the Davidic keys that unlocks the gates of heaven. Hallelujah. And that's why all of these understanding have been coming in this season to prepare us. Because as that sign plays out in heaven, you are emerging into a son of God. And you are emerging into a priest after the order of Melchizedek. You are growing into a man who is carrying the seven spirits of God. You are carrying the scepter of righteousness that loves righteousness and hates wickedness. So that God is putting an anointing of gladness above the fellows upon your life. So that now he's declaring the decree from the courts of heaven and saying, you are my son. So he's expecting you, whether you want to start now or whether you want to wait till September for the sign, September 23rd for the sign. From now, the decree you are supposed to be declaring is that I will declare it. The Lord has said, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Now begin to do Zedek. Begin to pray according to the priesthood order of Zedek. Let's stand to our feet. There is no sign in the heavens without you, the signs and the wonders of God in the earth. There is no star that appears in the skies from the east without a baby being born in a manger. There is no September 23rd alignment without a man-child company, a Davidic 30 and 3 company being born in the earth. Lift your hands and say, Father, I will declare the decree. Go ahead, pray. I love truth. I love.